Hello, my name is Kishmani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishmani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra word problems. Today we'll do problem number 172. Problem number 172, as you can see, it's already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it, shall we? <coughs> it says, Yesterday, Yesterday I made a journey. I made a journey of 19 kilometers. I ran part of my journey at 5 kilometers and then I decided to walk the rest of the journey, rest of the distance at 3 kilometers per hour. So first I, I was running at 5 kilometers per hour. Kilometers per hour. This is kilometers per hour. That's my speed. And then I decided to walk rest of the time at 3 kilometers per hour. So far so good. They go on to tell us that, or rather I go on to tell you that, had I, had I walked, had I walked for the amount of time that I ran and run, reason it says run, not ran, run because past perfect of run is run, had I run, had I run the amount of time that I walked, I could have covered two more kilometers. I could have covered two more kilometers. The question simply is, how long did I walk? So it's a quite straightforward problem. Again, one more time, we know that we're going to cover 19 kilometers. Part of the journey we're going to do at 5 kilometers per hour, and then we're going to walk at 3 kilometers per hour. The question is, how long did I walk actually, knowing the fact that had I done the reverse, had I run when I walked, and had I walked when I had run for the amount of time, in that scenario, we are told that I could have covered two more kilometers. Very simple, very straightforward question. Alas, it is questions that are always straightforward and simple and not the answers. If you want to solve it yourself, if you want to try it yourself, if you want to give it a shot, pause the video, do the problems, and once you have done it, once you have your own work, you can resume the video and then compare your work against the work that you and I will do together in a few seconds' time. Do you understand? I'm going to get out of your way. And I'm going to read one more time and I'm going to give you five seconds for, for you to be able to pause and unpause the video. Here we go. Yesterday I made a journey of 19 kilometers. I ran part of the journey at 5 kilometers per hour and walked the rest at 3 kilometers per hour. Had I walked for the amount of time that I ran and run the amount of time I walked, I could have covered two more kilometers. How long did I actually walk? There we go. Do it yourself. Post the video and do it yourself. Okay. So what is going to be our game plan? What is going to be our strategy? What is going to be our uh, our line of attack? In order for us to understand what we need to do here, in order for us to understand what, what, what a viable strategy would be here, in order for us to start our work, we have to first understand what we are being told and what we are being asked. At the end, they're asking us how long did I walk, but we know that we walk two kilometers more. We walk two kilometers four, more. So second part tells us how much we walk total, total amount of, amount, amount of distance that we walk is two kilometers more, which we walk 21 kilometers. If we can somehow figure out the time period, listen very carefully, if we can f somehow figure out the time period for each of the segment, we can solve for the distance, total amount of distance. And once we have the distance, we can go back and figure out how long actually I walk in the actual scenario, not in the reverse scenario. This is the reverse scenario. This is the reverse scenario. Do you understand? The question is, where are the time periods going to come from? The time periods are going to come from the first part. The first part, we can extract the amount of time that I that I ran and the amount of time that I walked. Let's do it. Let's do it together, shall we? So let's do it, let's, let's do it in the bottom here. Let's make a little let's make a little picture. It'll be easier to to visualize it. So here is our solution. The total distance we know is 19 kilometers. That is given to us. And we know that part of the distance, part of the distance I I ran, I ran the first part, I ran at 5 kilometers per hour. The question, so the problem is we don't know how far I uh, how how far of a distance I run. I, I ran rather. Let's let's give it a name. Let's call it D D kilometers. D kilometers is the part that we are running. We ran at 5 kilometers per hour. 
Well, if this is d kilometers, and since the total is 19 kilometers, the remaining distance that I walk must be 19 minus d kilometers. This is the amount of distance. This is the this is how much we must have walked at 3 kilometers per hour. There we go. Now we can see. Now we can clearly see that we can extract the time period for each of these segments of our journey. What do you suppose is the amount of time that we that I ran, which is what which is what eventually we want to get to find it. But what's going to what's going to happen is that this time period that we're going to extract here will have the variable d in it. We'll have to solve for the d from the second part of the story. We'll get to that in a second. How far? How 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 long do you suppose we ran? Well, time time we know. Let's call it t1. Let's call it t1 here for this this segment, and let's call it t2 for this segment. The amount of time I ran has to equal the distance that we walk, which is d kilometers, which is d kilometers right here, over the speed, which is 5 kilometers per hour, 5 kilometers per hour. Are you able to see, are you able to see, I hope you are, it's a very simple, very straightforward thing, that the amount of time that we travel has to do with the distance over the speed. For example, if I tell you that I travel 20 kilometers at 2 kilometers per hour, well, if I travel 20 kilometers at 2 kilometers per hour, I must have traveled for 10 hours. Or if I tell you that I travel 20 kilometers at 5 kilometers per hour, I must have gone 4 hours. So the amount of distance divided by the speed is going to give us the time period. This is, this is expressed in hours. And how do we know that? It's right here. You see the kilometers, kilometers are going to cancel out. And this hour is going to end up on the top. So this is, this is expressed in hours. Keep that in mind. This is very important to understand. Same thing here. You can figure out T2, which is the time period that we take for the second part of our journey, the, the part where we decide to walk at a leisurely pace of 3 kilometers per hour. And what is that time period going to be? Well, it's going to be same same ideas here, except the distance that we are walking is 19 minus d. 19 minus d kilometers at 2 kilometers? 3 kilometers per hour. 3 kilometers per hour. Again, as you can see, clearly, the kilometers the unit of kilometer is going to drop out and the hours are going to end up on the top and again keep in mind that this is hours t2 is the hours let's put a demarcation here so we can keep them separate so that part is done now we're going to tackle the reverse scenario that is given to us which is had i walked for the time period that i ran and had i run for the time for the amount of time that i walked i could have gone two more kilometers we'll deal with that on the top. We need the room of course so we, I'm going to have to erase the problem. Do you understand? So now let's do let's do as we said the reverse scenario. What happens in the reverse scenario? Well in the reverse scenario here we are running, we're not going to run, we're going to walk. We're going to walk. Walk at 3 kilometers per hour. Now before we go any further, before we go any further, for those of you who were clever enough to actually spot the problem already kudos for you but for those of you who did not pause the video i want you to stare at this thing and tell me what is wrong with this picture there is something wrong with that picture the way i drew it that picture is not correct there is a profound mistake in it if you draw the picture like this there is a profound lack of understanding as to what is going on in this story the way i drew the picture here what I'm trying to predict is that for the amount of time, uh, for rather, the, what I drew here is that for the, for the distance that I walked, or for the distance that I ran, I decided to walk that distance. And for the distance that I walked, I decided to run that distance. It is not the distance that is held constant here. It is the amount of time. The problem clearly says that had I run for the time period that I walked, and had I walked for the amount of time period that I ran, I could have gone two more kilometers. It is the time periods that are constant, not the distance. 
this segment, this segment is not, it's not the same segment. This is wrong. This is wrong. We do not know how much of a distance we are going to walk. We do not know that. This is wrong. So, there we go. We are going to walk. We are going to walk at 3 km per hour. For how many hours? For this time period. Right here, it is the time period that is held constant. D over 5. For D over 5 hours. And then here, we are going to run at 5 km per hour for how many hours? For this many hours. 19 over D over 3. 19 over D. 19 minus D over 3. 19 minus D over 3 hours. Are you with me? Again, we are running out of room, so I'm going to erase the bottom part. That's it, we are done with it. We have extracted what we need to extract from here, which are the time periods. These are the time periods we are going to, this is the time period we are going to run, this is the time period we are going to walk in the reverse scenario. Now, if we know how many hours, listen carefully now, because we are getting very close to the punchline, if we know how many hours we are walking at what speed, we can figure out this distance. And if we know how many hours are we running at what speed, we can figure out that distance. And this distance plus that distance we know is two more than the previous distance, which, 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 which was 19 kilometers. So it'll be 21 kilometers. There you go, there is our equation. And in that equation, the only unknown will be the d, the distance. And we can solve for d, and once we have the d, we can answer the, the question that is being asked by going in the original scenario. Do you understand? Let's continue. Enough of the talk. I need, we need the room. So I'm going to raise all of this thing. Just give me one second. Before we erase this thing, why don't we figure out this distance right here. So if I tell you that I'm walking at 3 km per hour, if I tell you that I'm walking at 3 km per hour, and if I also told you that I walk for 7 hours, <coughs> if I walk for 7 hours at 3 km per hour, how, how far did you suppose I walk? I walk 21 km. Or if I tell you that I walk at 3 km per hour for 2 hours, well, at 2 hours, in 2 hours, at 3 km per hour, I would have gone 6 hours. It's just 3 times 2. It is simply the speed times the hours. The speed times the time. So this distance right here, this distance that we're depicting here, is simply 3 times d over 5 kilometers. You with me? Similarly here, it is 5 kilometers per hour that we're going. 5 kilometers per hour at 19 minus d over 3 hours. For three, 19 minus d over 3 hours, this is our second segment. This is kilometers. And again, I'm not showing the work here, but if you were to show this 5 here, this 5 here is the 5 kilometers per hour, as you can see here, times 19 minus d over 3 hours, as you can see again, the unit of hour, the unit of hour drops out and it is the distance that we are left with, which is simply 5 times this quantity, which is right there. So this amount plus this amount plus this amount has to equal 2 more than the original distance, which was 19. So this amount has to be 19 plus 2. There is your equation, right there is your equation. If all you have to do now is solve that equation for d. Let's do it on the bottom. We need the room. Let's do it on the bottom. So I'm going to rewrite it here. So we have 3 times d over 5 plus 5 times 19 minus d over 3 equals 21. The problem is that here we have a denominator of 5, here we have a denominator of 3, and here we have a denominator of 1. That won't do. We need the same denominator. So it would make our life easier if we had the same denominator. If we have the common denominator, the denominator ceases to play any role, the denominator ceases to have any importance, and we can ignore it. The question is, how do we make the denominator the same? Well, it's very simple. Let's find a common denominator here, the least common denominator, not just any old denominator. You can have a common denominator of 15 billion, but that'll be silly. That'll be damn silly. The common denominator, let's use it as 15. 15 is the smallest one that we can find here. The least common multiplier, I think it's called LCM. And uh, that's 15. 
So we have a 5 here. How can I convert this 5 into a 15? It's very simple. Take this part and multiply top and bottom by 3. Now we have 3 times 5 will become 15. Here we have a 3 here. How can I convert this denominator to 15? Well, that's very simple. Take this quantity and multiply it by 5 over 5. Now we have 5 times 3 is 15. Here we have a denominator of 1. How can I convert it to 15? It's very simple. Multiply top and bottom by 15. Voila. Now we can pick up our speed. I'm, I'm going at a too much of a leisurely pace. I know that. I know that. So 3 times 3 is 9. So we have 9D plus... What the hell is the matter with this marker? This marker is no good. I'm still here. I have not gone anywhere. It's just that if, if I don't throw it away right away, if I don't get rid of it right away, I know that I'm going to keep picking up the same damn thing and it'll be very annoying. So 3 times 3 is 3 times 3 is 9, so it's 9D plus 5 times 5 is 25. Or oh, this is going to be a little bit more complicated. 19. We're going to figure out 25 times 19 in a second and 21 times 15. Let's leave it like that for the time being. How much is 25 times 19? Well, don't look at me. How the hell do I know? I know what 10 times 25 is. 10 times 25. 10 times 25. I know it's 250. That I do know. That I do know. If 10 times 25 is 250, then 20 times 25 must be 500. Must be 500. Multiply both sides by 2. If, if 20... If 20 25s... If 20 25s are 500, then 1925, 1925 must be 125 less than 500, which is 475. 475 minus 25D minus, minus 25D. And it looks like we have no choice but to figure out what 21 times 15 is. So how much is 21 times 15? 21 times 15, 20 times 15, 20 times 15, is 300 and then another 15 would be 315. I hope I did not make a boo-boo. I hope and pray to God. We will soon find out, won't we? Because we're going to verify our answer at the end. Let's pick up speed again. As I said, I keep slowing down. 9D minus 25D is going to give us negative 16D which equals to bring the 3, 475 there, so we can end up with 475 minus 315. 475, bring it on this side, 475 minus 315 is 0, 7 minus 1 is 6, 4 minus 3 is 1, so it's negative 116. Oh, that's very simple. If negative 16 D is equal to negative 160, that means D is equal to 10. D is equal to 10. There you go, D is equal to 10. The question was, how far did I walk in my actual scenario? Where can we do it? We need the room again. So, let's, so remember, d is equal to 10. I'm not going to raise this part because I'm going to, I want to save this thing because we're going to come back to use this for verification. So let, let's squeeze it in here. Let's squeeze it in here. So now we this is our original scenario. This was the reverse scenario. This is the original scenario. This was 19 kilometers. We just found out that D is equal to 10, which means uh, 19, 19 minus 10 must be 9, which means for 10 kilometers, for 10 kilometers, we, we ran at 5 kilometers per hour. Okay, listen carefully. If you ran for 5 kilometers per hour for 10, 10 kilometers, which means you must have gone 2 hours. But that's not what they're looking for. They're not asking us how long, how long we ran. They're asking us how long we walked. We walked 9 kilometers at 3 kilometers per hour at 3 kilometers per hour, which means we must have walked, we must have walked for 3 hours. And that is what they're looking for. They were asking us how long did I actually walk? The answer is I walked for 3 hours in reality. Now we're going to use, let's leave it there, now we're going to use this information to verify our answer, make sure this answer is correct by putting it in here. So, so this was this was 10. This, we don't need any of this thing. Let's verify it up there on the top. Listen very carefully. So for two hours, so for two hours in the reverse scenario, we're going to walk 
we're going to walk for two hours, not run, we're going to walk for two hours. So walk two hours at, this is the reverse scenario, at three kilometers per hour. Well, if you're going to walk two hours for three kilometers per hour, that's six kilometers. Plus, here we were running, we were, we were walking rather, this was the walk part. We were walking for three hours, now we're going to run. We're going to run, this is the reverse scenario, see, we're going to run for three hours, this three hours right here, we're going to run for three hours at five kilometers per hour. Well, if you're going to run for five, five kilometers per hour for three hours, that's going to imply that you must have gone 15 kilometers. 15 kilometers of running and six kilometers of walking, 16 plus five is 21 kilometers, and 21 kilometers is indeed ex two more kilometers than the original distance that we walked, or original distance we covered rather, not walked, which was 19 kilometers the problem told us. And the problem also told us that had we done the reverse scenario, we could have gone two more hours, which is exactly what we find here, or two more kilometers rather, which is exactly what we find here. That's our way of making sure that our answer is correct, our work is correct. Do you understand? It was a lot of fun. Bye now.